Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comment section of one of my videos. And if you wish to see some of yours shown on this channel, just leave me the Steam Workshop link somewhere and I'll eventually get around to it. But for today, we are looking at a, another land vehicle. And this one is called the Frontier Truck Gaijin Love Light Edition. I hope I'm saying that name correctly, because I am terrible with names. So pressing F10 and finding the Frontier in the spawn menu, there it is, and there is a name up there. This thing is 357 small blocks using the Wasteland DLC pack. It uses no mods, and it's got all the information written about it on the Steam Workshop page, as well as a bunch of disclaimers at the bottom here, which are very fun to look through. So at the very front here, we got ourselves our barred window blocks, acting as our front grille with a battery sitting right behind it. On the left and the right hand side, we got our offset spotlights to light up the darkness with an LCD screen right below that with Gaijin written on it as our number plate. If we were to start to move around this vehicle, we're going to see our lovely wasteland wheels, which have been put to a very good use, as well as some more barred window blocks being used as wheel guards or mud flaps. I can't remember what they're called. Yes, we can see our battery sitting right in the middle there, as well as an artificial mass right behind that. As we continue along, we're going to see a way to get in and out. So we're just going to come up to it, hop inside here, and we'll be able to drive this thing around. So this is our driver's seat and what we're going to get for our view. And this is our passenger seat, where we get a equally great view all the way around. But we'll come back to that a bit later. So coming over to this section right here, this is our fuel hinge where we can deploy it all the way down and connect it up to say another vehicle or maybe even a base and use this to transfer fuel into this vehicle. So it will simply fold all the way down, the hinge at the top will then clip onto another hinge and you'll be connected up together and can transfer it across. And that's going to be for our hydrogen engine sitting up here, which is lovely and red and easy to spot. As we continue along, we're going to see the same setup as we did at the front. We've got a battery there and an artificial mass. And as we continue along, we will be able to see a sneaky gyroscope just inside there. And as we move towards the back there, some great use of the letter blocks, adding as a side light. A spare wheel at the very back. We've got two offset brake lights. And once again, an LCD screen telling us the name of the vehicle. As we move up and above here, this is our trailer to carry stuff around. And we can just about carry stuff. Well, to come like this. And snap it down we can carry a few cargo containers on the back here they will hover due to the fact the back has been lowered thanks to half blocks it can still be perfectly used as a transport vehicle just slapping them across like so and away you can drive but removing them and continuing along there we go there's the hydrogen engine we saw just a moment ago there's the top of our fuel hinge and up here is our support, which is for our four spotlights at the front, so we can really light up the darkness, or even use this just to light up an area that you're trying to mine in, or just try and shine a light down into a tunnel. As we move towards the front here, we do have an ore detector, so we can use this thing to go out and find ore patches. And there is a battery there, where we can handily see the charge of the battery with its four green blocks. And then if we were to drop down and come underneath this thing, what we're going to see is a bunch of grass, but you might be able to make out that we do have some pistons on here, which can be used to lift the vehicle off the ground and be able to do maintenance work underneath it. Always a handy thing to have on a land vehicle, because you never know when you're going to damage a block underneath it, and it's always frequently damaged, at least in my hands. Yes, you can see a bunch of hydrogen tanks right there, which is for our hydrogen engine. You can see a bunch of cargo containers sitting right at the bottom there, as well as a bunch of conveyors that are linked up into the hydrogen engine. And there's two more pistons at the very back there, and there's our spare wheel our brake lights are sitting. So that is a very brief look around the outside of the Frontier truck and it does look fantastic with how it's been set up and everything going on with it. So grabbing hold of my character we're now going to come inside here and see what that has to offer. But first of all let's come into our passenger seat from the ground here. We can just about get inside here it's quite difficult without the crosshair but this is what the passenger will see. We've got a fantastic view all the way around and we do have a programmable block right in there showing us our artificial horizon and of course our planetary gravity. If I was to find the programmable block in the little menu right here, here it is. So editing this, we've got nothing going on with it. But if you want to, you could find the vehicle lights. If I come into here and find it, the immersive car lights, which will then activate your brake lights and all that. 
and your turning lights when you start to turn around. So we'll just go and load that in there for the moment. And there we go. Coming out of the passenger seat and moving all the way around to the driver's seat. Just hopping into here. There we go. Bring up the HUD. This is what we get. So number one, two and three is going to be for our fuel arm. Pressing number one is going to fold all the way down. Number two is going to be to attach it. And number three is going to be to detach it. So we can drive it into place. We can then attach it. Refuel this thing with hydrogen, detach it, then fold it all the way back up, and away we go. It's a very nice little novel thing to do with this rather than just manually dumping it in or using a connector. Yes, putting the parking brake back on. Number four is going to be for the lights at the very front on and off. So there we go. And number five is going to be for our spotlights on top, on and off. If I was to change this to nighttime so we can get a better view at the spotlights, that'll do quite nicely. Turning off our regular lights, turning off the spotlights. It's quite dark around here, and this is the type of light we get. So yes, we can use this for constructing at night if we are using, say, a very dark mod, or it's simply a lot darker due to your screen settings. Number six is going to be for the hydrogen engine on and off, so if we need the additional power, we can then activate that and turn it off. But we do have a battery that we can set to auto or recharge, depending on what we want to do. Number eight is for our hydrogen tanks to stock power on and off, and number nine is for our pistons underneath this vehicle, so hopping out of here, crouching down, we can see them coming all the way down to the ground. And the vehicle will lift up and allow us to access underneath. Well, we can access the hydrogen tanks if we wanted to. And if we can come around to here, weld stuff out if it took damage. We can access those cargo containers if we were to remove a block. And we can always remove a battery and place a new one on if we wanted to. Coming back out of here and lowering this back down. I'm not sure how I grabbed the passenger seat from there. We'll drop this back down to the ground. Tab number two, three, and four is empty. So what we can do now is drive this thing around. So moving forwards, this is what we get in the first person view. Got a nice view out the side there, a nice view at the front, and we can get a fantastic amount of speed out of this thing. So we're going at about 15 meters per second, and we seem to be capping at that. We seem to be very, very stable. And we do have a gyroscope controls. Oh God, I should have looked where I was going. I didn't realize there was a big cliff here. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh. And there we go, we are still roughly in one piece, and thanks to the gyroscope, we didn't really do too much damage, it's a light bit of bodywork damage that can easily be fixed up thanks to our pistons. So they're just driving us out of this hole, and making sure there's no other random cliffs anywhere. And driving on back again. As you saw there, we did take a little bit of damage, but it looks like it was mainly just the barred window blocks at the back there, a few steel blocks at the front, we did lose one offset spotlight, and why is this area so rocky? I don't remember this ever being like this. Let's just try to find a flat piece of terrain, and we'll do a turning test. In fact, this will do it just nicely. So moving forwards, doing a sharp turn. This is where a lot of vehicles tend to fail around. In fact, this isn't even flat. So we'll start to turn around. We're doing 40 meters per second, roughly that. Turning around in a nice circle. We have, well, seemingly no risk of flipping over, which is very nice stuff. So, now that I'm not being interrupted by randomly spawning blocks, yes, the turning on thing is fantastic. A lot of vehicles tend to forget that if you're doing a sharp corner at speed, you will tend to flip over. But this thing has enough weight on it that it seems to be very grounded when you do it. Its one weakness is spontaneous spawning rocks or random cliffs that appear out of nowhere. One final thing, slamming on the parking brake, and we don't flip up. We are nice and stable with this thing, which is always nice to see. So that is it for the Frontier Truck. It's a very nice land vehicle. They can be very useful for going out and finding ore patches, attach a few car containers onto the back, manually mine the stuff up and transport it back to base. This thing is nice and solid and can handle a lot of weight. And you can always carry one person along with you to make them do most of the work. So there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play it around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. And to end this, we can go and crash ourselves into another random little canyon. So here we go, over to this, doing a backflip, and slamming straight into that. And that is the damage we've dealt. Didn't really do too much damage, that's actually very impressive how sturdy this vehicle is. We've still got our passenger seat, so we can't always slap on a remote control block and still drive the thing. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.